Now let's talk about the multiplication rule. This is the form of multiplication rule. The probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. That's kind of complicated. Um, for independent events we just talked about, it's a little bit simpler. The probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B. But again, we don't want to be using formulas. Let's talk about some intuition here. Here's the intuitive rule I want you to use. And when you hear and, that means multiply. And then always account for dependent events. So let's talk about that by using a new kind of probability diagram called a tree diagram. Tree diagrams model multiple dependent or successive events. And each branch of the tree represents a different event. So let's look at an example here. Um, we're gonna do a tree diagram of getting into your dream school. So say you have a 65% probability of getting a higher than average GPA and ACT score. If you have a higher than average GPA and ACT score, you have a 83% chance of getting admitted. It's pretty good to your dream school, dream college. If you have a below average GPA and ACT score, you only have a 39% chance of being admitted. So it's obviously advantageous to get a higher than average GPA and ACT score. So event one is, let's see, in high school, what GPA or ACT score you would get. There are two options. You can get above average or below average. And we can fill in the probabilities. Probability of having above average AC, F, A, uh, sorry, GPA and ACT was 65%. So probability of having below average is the rest of that probability or 35%. You just do one minus that. Let's say fill in all the branches. The next event is being admitted to college. And this depends on how well you did on your ACT and GPA. So in the world in which you had a higher than average ACT and GPA, let's follow that branch, you could be admitted to the school or not admitted to the school. And we know from the problem set up that there's an 83% chance that you were admitted to school if you had a higher than average GPA and ACT. So that means the rest of the probability, there's only a 17% chance of not being admitted. In the alternative universe where you had a below average ACT and GPA, you had a 39% chance of being admitted and actually had more than half chance of being not admitted, 61% because that's what that's the one there. <clears throat> so zoom in on this tree and, and talk about probabilities here. Let's let event H be the event of getting a higher than average ACT and GPA. Let's let event A be the event of being admitted to your dream school. So let's find the probability of H and A, the probability of getting a higher than average GPA, uh, GPA ACT and being admitted to your dream school. So in this case, we have to follow the top branch. We have a higher than average ACT GPA, so we need to find that probability and then the top branch again, the probability of being admitted to the dream school. So remember our intuitive probability rule, and means multiply. So we're gonna take those two probabilities and we're gonna multiply them. When we multiply them, we get an overall probability of 0.54. So there's a 54% chance of both these events happening. Now let's find the probability of A, the probability of being admitted, being admitted to your dream school, which is one of the final events here. So this is a little bit trickier. Now there's multiple paths to being admitted to the school. There's path one where you got a higher than average GPA in ACT and you're admitted. We found the probability of that path already. There's also the path of getting below average ACT GPA but still making it into the school anyway. And to find the probability of that path, below average and admitted, remember and means multiply, we multiply along the path. So these two paths have two different probabilities but they're both included in the event of being admitted to the school. So it's either or, you could go down path one or path two. Remember, or means add, that's what we're going to in the last lesson. So we simply just add those paths together and the overall probability of being admitted to your dream school is 68%. Now let's find the probability of a condition. The probability of having attained a higher than average AC GPA given you were admitted to your dream school. We found, looking at the given first, that the probability of being admitted to the school was 68%. We just found that out in our last problem. So that is the given. The probability of the given happening, being admitted to the school was 68%. And remember, Given means divide by the given. So I'm gonna divide by 68%. I'm scaling the probability by the chance of the given. And now, among these paths, I need to find the path of the event I'm looking for, that I had a higher than average ACT GPA. Well, among these paths, that's the top path right there. We gotta get the whole path, the path of both of them happening. So that's 0.54 over 0.68. That gets you a probability of 79%. So to summarize what we talked about so far, here are my five intuitive probability rules to get a five on the AP stats exam. Number one, if no diagram or drawing is given, draw one for yourself. That could be a Venn diagram, it could be a two-way table, it could be a tree diagram, whatever the situation calls for, draw one and that will help your thinking going into trying to solve the problem. 
Two, the complement rule. Probability of A not happening is one minus the probability of A happening. Three, or means add, beware of double counts. Four, given means divide by what's given. It's out of what's given. And then five, and. And means multiply, adjust for dependence. Use these rules and your intuition. Do not depend on formulas for probability. If you depend on these sorts of formulas, often you won't even know where to start and get confused very easily. You will have, in the worlds of DJ Khaled, played yourself. So let's get into our discussion for today. If you randomly sample among the OK Cupid profiles of age 36 heterosexual men, we found that 64% chance of getting an above median height person and a 77.6% chance of getting an above median height income. And these probabilities will only be 50% of the population. So we raise our eyebrows a bit. There's reason to doubt that um, these are actually accurate. Maybe some people are lying. But what if we just look at the people who reported they make below median earnings? It seemed like median earnings were the ones that were most inflated. Let's look at the people who actually reported that they earned below median earnings, the people that did that. So if we just look at um, the, everyone, if we look at everyone, the probability of finding someone who was tall was 64.1%. That's without knowing about their earnings. And again, if we filter for the people who just reported low earnings, so given they had low earnings, their probability in tall was 51.2%. So here's the conditional distribution just for low earners. And we're close to that 50-50 split there. So maybe low earner in this case is acting as an indicator for someone who's honest. So let me ask you that. Do you believe that filtering results for just the men, so given the men just reported below median earnings, would return more honest matches on this online dating site? <laughs>